What's up guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine. Today we're going to be doing a video on file fitting piston rings. So we'll take a file and we'll file it. No, I'm joking. So this is a question I get asked a lot. It's kind of funny with two strokes. So we're going to go over it. I'm going to explain why I'm file fitting these rings. So let's get started. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching. Um, if you guys could take a second, like, comment, subscribe, greatly appreciated. So file fitting piston rings. So there's a big difference between file fitting two stroke piston rings and file fitting four stroke piston rings. So on a lot of four stroke applications, you basically need to file fit the rings. On two strokes, most two-stroke rings are precision fit rings, so they come pre-gapped for you. So when I get asked this, most of the times, unless there's a problem in manufacturing, you shouldn't have to file fit them. So when you set the clearance up correctly, the piston to wall clearance, the gap ends up being correct. So the reason we are file fitting these rings is we are testing a new coating so this coating actually builds the piston up. So this piston is now technically a quarter millimeter oversized, 10 thousandths oversized. So we had this piston skirt coated and the crown coated. Um, and this is a test on a really good customer of ours. He knows about it. Um, and what it is is years ago, we used to have 86.5 millimeter pistons. They're not really made anymore, so the sleeves we use in our big bores can go up to 86.5, but you don't have the pistons. I've heard about this coating. I wanted to try it, so I talked to the customer and said, hey, why don't we try to coat a set of 86 pistons, go up a quarter over because the engine was just tired but not blown up. So that's what we did. So this is now 86.25 or right around there. Um, but now if we use the 86 millimeter rings, the gap would be way too big and you would have issues. So the solution to that is we use 86 and a half millimeter rings. But if we use a standard 86 and a half millimeter ring in an 86.25 hole, it won't fit. So if you see the rings, butt, and it won't go in. So we have to gap them now. So this is really, really common on outboards and stuff like that. A lot of times there's pistons that they don't make the ring for. So, you know, in general, you can remove, you know, I think it's 30 or 35 thousandths off of a ring before you have to start modifying the pin groove. So if you notice, let me see if I can get this. There's a couple different style piston rings, Wiseco and Wasner. It uses an offset pin, so you can see there's like a little offset groove in it. So here's the difference. So there's a couple different ring filers and stuff like that on how you would do this. You know, on a standard four-stroke ring, you know, you either grind off just one edge or you use, you know, this old-school style grinder to just push together and do it. These work really, really well if you have a good hand for them. Personally... I'm just not a feel person. Uh, I work better with measuring equipment and stuff like that to make sure I end up being the perfect size. I know guys that will set up V8 engines all using this. Got some buddies that set up a drill to it and they do amazing work. I'm honestly jealous that they can do it that way. I've never been good in that aspect. So I have a total seal ring filer. Um, these work really, really well because when you find out how much you want to remove, it's easy to set it up and make it repeatable. So basically what we end up having to do is we do a little bit of math. So let me write all this down. Let's write all this out. Just 
so I can explain everything that's going on here. And excuse my handwriting because it's terrible. So the stock size piston is 3.382. All right, so now we added 10 thousandths to that piston, which these pistons All right, so coded. Now with this style coding, this style coding that we're testing self clearances. So on this piston, we would normally run five and a half thousandths clearance. We set this one up at four. So we set it up significantly tighter because this company says that this piston will clearance itself. So plus, So now we're at 3.396, all right? So that is what this bore is set to. So now, here's the tricky thing. So now, you know, the basic rule of thumb is four thousandths per inch of bore clearance for ring end gap. I normally add an extra one or two after that because an extra thousandth or two of ring end gap will not hurt you. But a couple thousands not enough will destroy an engine. So you want it to be right, but you have to be really careful of keeping it too tight. So just to show you how this works, and then let me just do, so, and then a theoretical 86.5 millimeter bore so, is exactly that. So, so now the ring manufacturers basically do everything off of American, so like Wiseco does. So if you notice that 86 and a half millimeter bore and that part number is because that is the exact size bore that that ring is designed for, okay? So there's a little bit of math in here, but I'm trying to explain it. So if you ever have to do this, you know the easy way to get it done. So now, you know, we know the size of the bore. We know that the difference between this and this is nine thousandths, ten thousandths, whatever. So you would think, oh, I just take ten thousandths off. But that's not correct. We have to take it off the circumference. So what we end up doing, so we'll take this number and times it by pi. Uh, hold on. Right, and then we'll take 3.396, which is our bore size, and times that by pi. And then we'll subtract them. So then we'll go 10.9697. Uh, Minus 10.668 equals 29. So there's 29 thousandths difference in circumference, okay? So now these rings are already gapped at this size to be correct, okay? So all we need to do is the difference in the bore sizes to figure it out. So the difference in those bore sizes in circumference is 
29 thousandths. Now, because this is a two-stroke ring and these are even, we can't just take 29 thousandths off one side. We need to take 14 and a half off each side. Hope I haven't lost you guys yet. So the way we end up setting these up, if you look, so we set this ring filer already. I don't know if I can zoom in. Let me see, can I zoom in there? So we are at 14 and a half right there. So basically, so I set this up already because I did the first two. So the way this ends up working is you set the ring in, you touch off, and you set zero. Then you feed this in to the number that you want, and then you just grind away. So the nice thing with this is there's a stop. So you set the stop, throw the piston ring in, and you rotate it, and then you lock it down. All right? So now... When we go to remove, we're going to remove 14 and a half thousandths off this side, and then we're going to flip the ring around and remove that off the other side. There we go. There we go. So now, we just take the deburring wheel. Perfect. Ring one, let's go to ring two. There we go. All right, so both are deburred. So now the other way that this can be done is you take a ring. Let me just grab it. This is just a junk ring. So you just take the ring, you push them the two together like this, and you rotate. So you do that, you stop, you put it in, you check it, you put it back, you remove a little more, you stop, you check it. This also works great, but it takes forever, and when you're a shop, I'm, it's a pain in the butt to get them all exactly the same. This machine makes that easy. Um, so if you're going to do a bunch of custom rings, I highly recommend the Total Seal tool. I've had it for years at this point, and I honestly don't know how I did it the old way anymore. So now we got the rings gapped, we got the rings deburred. We're going to test them real quick. So what I do is I just take an old ring and set it so it's loose in the top of the piston. I will set the ring to the top of the hole, slide it down so it's nice, square, and even, and then we go with a feeler gauge. And we double check our work. Perfect, and that grabs right there. And that one, we're at 17. Check the other one. Oh, 
Might be one thousand bigger. Yeah. So that one bites right at eighteen, which is still more than good enough. So, and now if you see, which when you do rings like this, the other thing you got to check is you want to put the ring on the piston and make sure that the ring will butt up on the pin. I don't know. Can you see that? See how it still butts up on the pin? That is really really important to make sure that that happens because if it does not um sometimes what ends up happening is although that you have gapped the ring this groove isn't deep enough and it hits the pin so it doesn't allow the ring to fully compress and then although it technically has the end gap you're looking at it's hitting on this pin so you do not um, and you end up with substantially more, um, and not only more, you can actually ring bind it because it's, it's hitting on the pin. So you want to, after you do this type of work on two stroke pistons, you want to double check it and make sure everything's good. So, but this gives you a quick and easy way on how to do it. Um, as I said, it's never a bad idea to check ring end gap when you're building an engine. If everything is correct and you're not mix matching stuff like we're doing here, you shouldn't have to, but it's never a bad thing to double check things. So I hope you guys like this video. Hopefully it wasn't too much math, um, but this is the easy way if you ever have to do it. And the tricky thing is with this machine, it's great, but if you have to do it in multiple sets, if I'm constantly adjusting this, it changes every time. So it's easier to figure out exactly how much you have to remove mathematically before you remove it. And luckily numbers don't really lie. So I hope you guys like the video. If you like, please like, comment, share. As I said before, it's greatly appreciated. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.